So today I'm going to be talking about Pac-Man frogs and why they might make a good pet for you. Pac-Man frogs are some of the coolest pet frogs that you can get. These frogs are from South America along with Amazon milk frogs, which are also cool pets. Pac-Man frogs can get anywhere from 4 to 7 inches long, with the female frogs being a little bit bigger than the males. In captivity, Pac-Man frogs can live anywhere from 10 to 15, maybe even 20 years. So like I always say when I'm talking about other pet reptiles and amphibians, you definitely want to prepare to have this animal for many years. I have one albino Pac-Man frog right now, but I'm definitely thinking about getting a different kind of morph in the future, like the chocolate, strawberry, and several others that have really cool colorations. I love my Pac-Man frog, and today I'm going to be telling you about why I think they make good pets and how to take care of them. Now this Pac-Man frog is only a few months old and it will get bigger, and as it grows and becomes an adult, I do think I'll put it in a 20 gallon enclosure. Some people may say that you can put a Pac-Man frog in just a 10 gallon enclosure its entire life, but personally I think I'll put mine in a 20. Now when it comes to substrate, I just like to use EcoEarth, and whenever I change my substrate I use about half a brick. You just have to soak the brick in water, but you don't want to get it too soaked to where it's dripping. Once your EcoEarth is separated and a little bit moist, you can add it to the enclosure. I personally like to add about 1-2 to two inches of EcoEarth at the bottom of the tank. I put enough substrate in my tank for my Pac-Man frog to be able to dig down just a little bit, but not too much to where it's hard to find him. After I add the EcoEarth, I make sure that there is a water bowl in the corner. I don't have my tank set up to where it's bioactive, but it's definitely an option that you have. Now I like to add leaves to my enclosure so it looks a little more naturalistic and gives my Pac-Man frog an option to hide underneath them. Most of the time my Pac-Man frog stays buried really in the open, not even under the leaves. I don't see him really using the leaves or this hide very much at all. Usually if he wants to hide, he just burrows down as far as he can to where he's just barely above the eco-earth. When it comes to humidity, I like to spray down my Pac-Man frog's enclosure one to two times a day. Definitely at least once a day at the end of the day, but I try to do it in the morning as well. For Pac-Man frogs, I recommend anywhere from 50 to 70% humidity throughout the day. And then that'll spike whenever I spray the enclosure up to 80, 90, or 100%. Now, I don't like to soak my Pac-Man frog too much, but I spray his enclosure every day, and usually every one to two weeks at the most, I will put him in a water bowl and let him soak that way. Now, you can add a mist system to your frog's enclosure. You don't want it to get too soaking wet, but there are a lot of cool systems out there where you can regulate and get an exact humidity that you want. You can put them on timers to go off every so often for a certain number of seconds. I have a mist around my Amazon Milk Frog's enclosure, and I've really enjoyed it. You can also check the humidity in your enclosure by using one of these digital humidity gauges that you can get off Amazon or in other pet stores. When it comes to heat, you don't want to get too crazy with it. Just like with any other frog, you don't want to give it too much heat to the point where it dries out and starts having health issues. What I like to do for my Pac-Man frog is add a tiny little ceramic heat emitter. Nothing that gets the enclosure or the hot spot that you're looking for any warmer than 82 to 83 degrees. You can check the temperature in your enclosure with one of these temperature guns. The temperature guns you can get at Walmart, Amazon, or really just about any hardware store, and they're pretty cheap. You can get these for about $20. You want to check your enclosure and your setup and make sure all of the temperatures and everything are just right before you actually add your frog to the enclosure. With this little heat emitter that I'm using right now with this dome, it stays to around 82 to 83 degrees in his little hot spot. The rest of the enclosure stays about room temperature, so around 72, 73 degrees. Now, some people recommend using a heat mat, but I personally haven't had a lot of luck with that. I've added a heat mat to my enclosure just in case, and I do have a thermostat hooked up with a probe to make sure that heat mat doesn't get too hot. I also made sure that my heat mat isn't too low to the substrate. I added my heat mat about 1 to 2 inches above the bottom of the tank so the frog can't be touching the part of the glass that the heat mat's actually on. Just remember, whatever heat bulb or heat emitter or heat mat you choose to use, just make sure you test it beforehand and make sure it doesn't get above about 82, 83 degrees so that your frog doesn't get too warm and dry out. Now, since these frogs do live on the forest floors, they obviously aren't midday baskers and they don't need a crazy daytime bulb or a really strong halogen or even UVB really. 
When it comes to lighting, the only light you really need is just the ambient light that comes through your house windows. You can add a weak UVB light if you want to, and I highly recommend the Arcadia Shade Dwellers. You can put UVB in your enclosure if you want, but the Pac-Man Frog doesn't have to have it in order to survive. You can add some plants if you're doing a bioactive enclosure, or I guess if you're not, but I would recommend adding an LED light. When it comes to feeding, this is where it can get a little bit weird sometimes. So I got my Pac-Man frog from a big pet store and they had my Pac-Man frog on crickets in the pet store. So whenever I brought it home and tried to feed it things like earthworms, which is another thing that I would recommend for Pac-Man frogs to eat. Some kind of night crawlers, um, dubia roaches, crickets, you can use pack attack and I would also recommend using wooden tongs rather than these metal ones. As a lot of you may know, Pac-Man frogs can pretty much go after whatever might fit in its mouth. I would rather them latch onto a wooden tong rather than a metal one because it's a little softer and it'd be easier on their mouth. I would recommend staying away from red wigglers. I heard that these, did I say wiggler? Wriggler. I would stay away from red wrigglers. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember what it was that's toxic in those specific worms but I would just avoid those altogether. When it comes to how often to feed Pac-Man frogs, as an adult, I would feed mine around three to four times a week, maybe even two times a week, depending on the meal size. Baby Pac-Man frogs can eat every day. You can feed small rodents every once in a while to adult Pac-Man frogs. I wouldn't recommend doing this any more than once a month or so. And you can feed them three to four medium to large crickets or whatever they will consume in about 15 minutes. Now when you do feed your Pac-Man frog, you want to make sure you dust the food items with some kind of a vitamin D and calcium supplement. Just remember, whatever they don't eat, try to remove that after they're done eating so that the crickets aren't jumping around, bothering them too much, or getting lost. So try to make sure that you give your Pac-Man frog the option of having a varied diet. So maybe one day feed it night crawlers, the next day crickets. But like I said, I got my Pac-Man frog from a big pet store. They were feeding it nothing but crickets every day and they were just being dumped into the enclosure. So that's what it responded to whenever I got him. I've been trying to tong feed him either night crawlers, dubia roaches, or maybe even mealworms. I would just recommend if you're struggling to tong feed your Pac-Man frog, just keep trying. You don't want to stress them out too much, but maybe try to rub the food item against their lips a little bit. If all else fails, I usually have luck throwing in a few crickets and then watching him hunt. My Pac-Man frog, it depends on the day, but sometimes it'll actually jump out of his little hole and attack the crickets or the worms, whatever I'm feeding him. And then other days he'll just wait for them to crawl by or he'll wait for me to bring him something with the tongs. Now, you wanna give your frog the option to have a water bowl inside of its enclosure in case it wants to soak. You don't wanna put too much water in the water dish so that your frog's not swimming around or anything like that, but put enough in it for it to soak in a little bit. Make sure you put some kind of water conditioner in the water that you add to the Pac-Man frog's enclosure so that it's safe for the Pac-Man frog to soak in or possibly drink. Now when it comes to cleaning, whenever I miss my Pac-Man frog's enclosure every day, I check to see if there's any poop left behind. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see it because it does blend in pretty well with the eco-earth, but just make sure you're being thorough and checking once a day. When it comes to changing the substrate, I like to change mine about once a month. I change it a little more often than I change my snake's aspen, for example, because there is a lot going on there with the misting every day and the food items running around, things like that. So I usually change the eco-earth in my Pac-Man frog's tank about once a month. It's not a bad idea when you do change the substrate to spray it down with some water or a safe cleaner that you can use with reptiles. Scrub it a little bit, give it a good clean, and then add the new substrate. In conclusion, I would say Pac-Man frogs are definitely one of the coolest pet frogs you can get. I've loved having my Pac-Man frog as a pet. You might say that they're a little bit boring at times since they really don't do a whole lot, but that's kind of what's cute about them. Pac-Man frogs come in several different morphs and there are some really cool colorations with these frogs. Whatever you do, just make sure you do plenty of research before getting a Pac-Man frog. So let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think Pac-Man frogs are a good pet if you've had experience with them in the past? So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.